Hi, I'm Vivek Arte, and I'm going to talk about incremental cryptography and incremental pseudo-random functions. This is joint work with Mihid Bellare and Luisa Khati. Consider a party that wants to compute a cryptographic function, say for message authentication, on a large document. It does so by applying the function to the document and generating the tag. This in general could be slow for large documents. Suppose the party now needs to edit the document in order to update it. If we use the function to generate the tag for the updated document from scratch, it would be slow and inefficient. This is problematic in today's age of big data, where one often deals with large documents that require real-time and frequent updates. Instead, we could use the property of incrementality, first introduced in 1995 by Bellari, Goldreich, and Goldwasser, to use the tag of the unedited document, the document, and the editing details to generate an updated tag much faster than computing the tag from scratch. Incrementality has already been studied for different areas of cryptography, such as message authentication, authenticated encryption, collision-resistant hashing, digital signatures, deterministic public key encryption, and even program obfuscation. One basic area in which it has not been studied, however, is pseudorandom functions. We bridge this gap in our work. Why are incremental pseudorandom functions of interest? Adding incrementality to PRFs allows for improving the efficiency via the use of incremental functions in a broader range of applications, more specifically those that need pseudorandomness. Consider the application of key derivation, where an application holding a key k regularly uses its data to generate sub-keys ki. This data may consist of a mix of static data, which stays constant, and dynamic data, which is different at each iteration. Using an incremental PRF will allow updating the key from ki to ki plus one, faster than computing it from scratch. We now outline our contributions. We divide them into three parts, namely definitions, tools for modular design, and constructions. We introduce incremental pseudorandom functions and incremental function families. The syntax for these objects is non-spaced. We will see what this means in a bit. We provide security notions for our incremental function families. We first talk about incremental pseudorandomness, which is the extension of PRF security to the non-space and incremental settings. Then we cover incremental unforgeability, which is an extension of the basic security definition from Bellari et al. 95, and is used for incremental message authentication. Schemes can be considered for two scenarios. A single document scheme, security is guaranteed only when a single document is considered as being edited and updated. On the other hand, in multi-document schemes, security holds even when there are multiple documents with different file names or identities that are being edited simultaneously. We provide transforms that convert schemes secure only for single documents to schemes secure in the multi-document setting. Our first transform uses a pseudorandom function as an auxiliary tool, while the second one uses a variable length hash function. These transforms work for both incremental unforgeability and for incremental pseudorandomness. We then provide a transform that builds a single document IPRF scheme from an incremental hash function. This serves an, as an extension of the carter wegman paradigm to the incremental setting. Our transform uses a symmetric encryption scheme in addition to the incremental hash functions we mentioned earlier. We then apply the previous transforms to build IPRFs based on various existing message authentication schemes, such as the PMAC, GMAC, XORMAC, and so on. The basic concept is to extract an incremental hash function from the message authentication scheme and use the IHTE transform to build an IPRF. Incremental cryptographic schemes sit on top of a non-cryptographic object called a document editing system. This describes the format of documents and the supported edit operations on them. The edit function is used to formalize the application of edit operations on the document. It takes a document, an operation code, some arguments, and returns an updated document D prime. The document D is a bit string that has a length that is a multiple of the block length. The operation codes and arguments are elements of a set that is specified by the document editing system. We now look at some examples of edit operations. We start with the replace operation, which replaces a block specified by its index number i with, its block, with a block x. Another example is the insert operation. It inserts a block x at the ith position of the document. The final example we consider is the delete operation. As the name suggests, this operation deletes the ith block of the document. 
A document editing system is a tuple which contains the block length, the block space, which we assume to be the set of bit strings that have length equal to multiples of the block length. The set of op edit operation codes, which stores the types of edit operation supported by the document editing system. The set of edit operation arguments, elements of which specify details of how the edit operation should act on the document. And the edit function, which takes the edit operation code, operation arguments, and the document and returns an updated document. We now start with a description of the three algorithms that are part of the definition of any incremental function family. A tagging algorithm takes a key, a nonce, the identity, and the document and produces a tag for the document. The update algorithm takes the key, a nonce, the identity, the document, the edit details, and the original tag and produces an updated tag for the updated document. The verification algorithm takes the key, the identity, the document, and the tag and returns a Boolean as to whether or not the verification succeeded. Note that the verification algorithm actually does not take a nonce. That is, verifying if the tag is valid does not require knowledge of the nonce used for tagging. An incremental function family is defined for a specific document editing system. It, it is a tuple which contains the key space, the nonce space, and output space, which are sets of allowed keys, allowed nonces, and allowed tags, respectively. The tagging algorithm, update algorithm, and verification algorithm are also in the tuple, and we have looked at those already in some detail. Nonces were first introduced in the works of Rogaway and others in the early 2000s. Nonces are values that can be picked by the adversary with only the requirement that the values picked must not repeat. Algorithms in nonce-based settings are deterministic, but they take the nonce as an input. Nonces can be used to capture both randomized and stateful algorithms. Security while using nonces guarantees that the security goal holds even when the adversary can pick non-repeating nonces arbitrarily. This precludes issues arising due to randomness failures. The benefit of using nonce-based definitions for PRFs is that they allow for the capture of more constructions, such as those based on the Carter-Wegman paradigm. This increases the applicability of these definitions. Nonces are widely used in practice and are an important component of internet standards for authenticated encryption and TLS. We now take a look at correctness. Correctness is a functionality requirement, not a security requirement. The basic notion requires that the tags that are generated via legitimate sequences of the tagging and update algorithms must be accepted by the verification algorithm, even if the nonces are repeated. Consider a document represented here by a green list. Suppose we run the tagging algorithm on this document using a fixed key and ID and some nonce to generate a tag, which is represented by the purple rectangle. Such a tag should successfully verify under the same key and ID and for a specific document. Next, consider running the update algorithm with the same key and ID and some nonce using this document and the previously generated tag and some edit operations. This will generate a new tag represented here by a darker purple rectangle. Correctness then requires that this updated tag successfully verifies under the fixed key and ID and for the document generated by applying the edit operations that were picked in the update step. There are more involved cases that will also need to be considered and we account for them all via a game in our work. We now look at a stronger form of correctness that we introduce, namely strong correctness. This stronger definition requires a tag produced by the update algorithm on a document to exactly match the tag produced by the tagging algorithm on the updated document when using the same nonce. To unpack this a bit, consider a document D and suppose we apply the tagging algorithm on this document using a key K, a nonce N prime and a document I identity ID to generate a tag T. Next, apply the update algorithm to generate the updated tag T. This algorithm will use the original document D, the previously generated tag T, the key K, a nonce N, and some edit operations. Let D mu denote the updated document that is generated by applying the edit operations to the document D. Strong correctness then requires that the tag that is generated by running the tagging algorithm on this document D mu using the same nonce as before, namely N, results in exactly the same tag. The benefit of having strong correctness is that it allows for proofs to drop the update algorithm altogether 
and simply replace it with an instance of the tagging algorithm that instead runs on the updated document. We define incremental PRF security of an incremental function family for a document editing system via a game played by an adversary. At a high level, the game checks if the adversary is able to distinguish between the output of an incremental PRF and the output of a random function after receiving tags for documents and updates of its choice. The game starts by picking a key at random from the key space and a random bit B. The game also picks a random function with the same domain and range as the IPRF. The adversary has access to three oracles and its goal is to guess the random bit. The three oracles are the tag oracle to which an adversary provides a nonce, identity and document and which then returns either the output of the IPRF for that combination of inputs with the picked key if B is one or the output of the random function if the bit B is zero. The second oracle is the update oracle which takes a nonce, an identity and edit operation details from the adversary and returns the output generated via the IPRF update algorithm using the inputs provided and the current document and tag values stored by the game when B is one or the output of the random function using the given nonce identity and the updated document when B is zero. The third oracle is the verify oracle, which takes as input the identity, the document, a tag, and in the case where B equals one returns the output of the verification algorithm on these inputs. If the queried document is not one that has been queried in previous tag and update oracle queries, if B is zero, then it always returns false. As a standard in nonce based frameworks, we do not allow the adversary to repeat nonces between queries. Further, the adversary is required to make a tag query for a given identity before making any update queries for that identity. The advantage of an adversary in this case is the standard distinguishing advantage uh, adapted for bit guessing games. Informally, we can say that a scheme is IPRF secure if the advantage of any practical adversary is small. The notion of incremental unforgeability or IUF security is based on the notion of basic security from the 1995 work of Bellari et al and extends it to the nonce based setting. As for IPRF security, we define IUF security uh, of an incremental function family for a document editing system via a game played by an adversary. At a high level, the game checks if the adversary is able to forge a tag that successfully verifies for a new document after receiving tags for documents and updates of its choice. As before, the game picks a key at random from the key space and the adversary has access to three oracles. The goal of the adversary is to set the win flag to true, which corresponds to a valid forgery. As before, the three oracles are the tag oracle, the update oracle, and the verify oracle. If the verification returns true, the adversary has achieved its goal and completed a forgery, and therefore the win flag is set to true. The advantage of an adversary is defined as the probability that the adversary wins this game. Informally, we can say that a scheme is IUF secure if the advantage of any practical adversary is small. Why do we need to consider updates separately? The adversary may have access to previous versions of documents and their tags. The adversary may also be able to issue edit commands to existing documents and obtain new incremental signatures. This may allow for attacks that break schemes that cannot be broken when restricted to not using the incremental update algorithm. However, as mentioned earlier, updates can be dropped in the case where the scheme under consideration satisfies strong correctness. In this case, update oracle calls can be replaced with tag oracle calls and the argument uh, to the tag oracle call is then cha changed to the updated document. We now discuss relations between pseudo-randomness and unforgeability. In the standard definition of IPRF security and unforgeability, it has been shown that PRF security implies UF security. The standard definition is not non-space and it also does not consider incrementality. More recently, there have been definitions of non-space PRFs and non-space MACs. Peyran and Seron have shown in 2016 that for these non-space definitions, there is a separation between PRF security and UF security. Note that these definitions are not for the incremental setting. Moving on to our work, we show that our PRF security notion implies our IUF security notion. An informal theory, theorem statement is as follows, which shows that there isn't any security loss occurring during the reduction. The consequence of this implication is that once we show IPRF security, we can immediately proceed to use the scheme to perform message authentication. 
Note that achieving this implication was a motivation behind including the verification oracle in our IPRF game, which makes the definition differ from non-incremental versions of PRF security. The single document setting, as we have seen, is the use case where we consider that there's only a single document on which tagging and updates are being performed. This setting was the one considered in the original work on incremental cryptography by Bellari et al. in 1994. On the other hand, the multi-document setting allows for consideration of multiple documents with different identities and maintains security in such a scenario. The follow-up work of Bellari et al. in 95 was the first to consider both these settings separately. However, they considered schemes independently for both settings. We first show that the multi-document setting is strictly stronger than the single document setting by means of an example scheme, which is secure in the single document setting, but not in the multi-document setting. In real life, it is more reasonable to assume that there are multiple documents that need to be considered by a user, and therefore the multi-document setting is more relevant in practice. At the same time, the single document setting tends to be easier to achieve due to the lack of document identities to be considered. We construct two generic transforms that use certain auxiliary tools to convert an incremental function family secure in the single document setting into an incremental function family secure in the multi-document setting. The first transform, which we denote by STM1, uses a non-incremental PRF to do so. However, the security reduction in this case is not tight. We therefore provide a second transform, which we denote by STM2, that uses a variable length hash function and provides a tight reduction of security. These transforms allow us to focus on building single document schemes since we can then use the transform to get multi-document schemes. We now have a look at the transform STM1. We use uh, IFMD to denote the multi-document incremental function family, while uh, the single document incremental function family is denoted by IFST. At a high level, the transform proceeds by generating a different key for each identity using the PRF and then using this different key for each different document identity in the single document scheme. Let us look at the resulting algorithms for the tagging, update, and verify algorithms. In all these cases, the components are the corresponding algorithms from the single document scheme and the PRF. Let's focus now on the tagging algorithm. The multi-document algorithm takes the key and the identity gives those as input to the PRF and generates a key corresponding to each identity. This new key is fed along with the remaining inputs to the multi-document algorithm to the single document algorithm, and the output is given as the output of the multi-document algorithm. Both the update and verify algorithms proceed in analogous fashion, and therefore we skip over their details. The theorem we proved in our work bounds the advantage of an adversary against the multi-document scheme as follows. It is easy to see that the reduction succeeds and the multi-document scheme is secure. A similar result also holds for IUF security. Note, however, that the inequality contains a multiplicative security loss corresponding to the number of distinct document identities queried. As a result, this reduction is not tight. Our quest for a tight reduction leads us to our second single document to multi-document transform. As before, we use IFMD to denote the multi-document scheme and we use IFSD to denote the single document scheme. The variable output length hash function is denoted by H. At a high level, the transform proceeds by using a hash of the identity and nonce to generate an updated nonce n prime. Then uh, the scheme prefixes a hash of the identity to the document to create an updated document d prime. The, the scheme then uses this updated nonce and updated document in the single document scheme. The update algorithm for the most part runs analogously. However, note that the prefixing of an additional block to the document means that the edit operation details need to be tweaked before using in the single document update algorithm. We denote this by an operation translate function, which takes as input the arguments and returns the tweaked arguments as output. For example, if the operation was to replace the ith block with x, it would get tweaked to replacing the i plus oneth block with x. All these inputs are then given to the single document algorithm and the resulting output is set as the output of the multi-document algorithm. The verify algorithm proceeds analogously to the tagging algorithm and so we skip the details. The theorem we prove in our work bounds the advantage of an adversary against the multi-document scheme as follows. It is easy to see that the reduction succeeds and the multi-document scheme is secure. 
A similar result also holds for IUF security. And we also note that our reduction is now tight. Moving on in our modular design journey, we now look at the Carter Wegman paradigm. This paradigm, introduced in 1981, is a well known technique used to construct a message authentication scheme using an almost universal hash function and a cryptographic masking function. General construction passes the message through, through the hash function and then masks the hash using the key and the nonce to generate the tag. Message authentication schemes using the Carter Wegman paradigm are very popular in practice due to their speed and efficiency. Examples of such schemes include the UMAC, the VMAC, and the GMAC. The UF security of the MAC follows as a result of the almost universality of the underlying hash function and the security of the cryptographic masking function. This could be PRF security if the mask is a PRF, or it could be INDCPA if the mask is an encryption scheme, and so on. We now proceed to look at our extension of the Carter Wegman paradigm which we call the incremental hash then encrypt transform. Now, IHTE transform uses as building blocks an incremental hash function IHF, a symmetric encryption scheme SE, and a key distribution function KDF. The symmetric encryption scheme must follow the NDE2 syntax of Bellare, Ing, and Takman 2019. The important point here is that the decryption algorithm should not need to take the nonce as input in order to decrypt. Further, we assume that the incremental hash function is incremental for the replace operation. Our transform extends the incrementality of the hash function to the resulting incremental function family while also achieving IPRF security in the single document setting. We now look at how the tagging and update algorithms work while we skip the de description of the verification algorithm as before. We start with the key derivation function. This block actually occurs within each algorithm but for ease of viewing, we pull it out and assume the tagging, update, and verification algorithms have access to both the derived keys. The KDF captures various design choices for the keys, such as keeping the keys for two schemes the same or picking them independently at random, among others. Let's now look at the tagging algorithm. The algorithm takes a number of inputs like the key, the nonce, and the document, just as per the usual incremental function family syntax. Note that since we are now in the single document setting, the identity is considered to be trivial and we can ignore it. The first step is to uh, run the key distribution function in order to generate the keys, which we assume is already done. Uh, we then use the incremental hash function along with the generated IHF key to hash the document and generate a hash value H. The document then uses the symmetric encryption algorithm with the symmetric encryption key, the nonce, and the hash value H to generate the tag. We now turn to the update algorithm. The first step there is to use the input of the original tag and use the symmetric decryption algorithm to extract the original hash value. This decryption follows the NDE2 syntax as we mentioned earlier. Next, the original hash value is input along with uh, the original document and the edit details to the update algorithm of the incremental hash function. This returns an updated hash value H prime. Finally, this updated hash value is used along with the nonce and the symmetric encryption key to construct the updated tag. We show that we can achieve IPRF security of this construction if we have computational almost universality of the underlying incre incremental hash function and AE2 security of the underlying symmetric encryption scheme. Computational almost universality uh, was formalized by Bellare in 2015 and is the computational relaxation of the almost universality notion we mentioned earlier. A2 security is a notion of security for NDE2 schemes that is also defined in Bellare, Ing, and Tachman 2019. We now look at some of the existing message authentication schemes used in the real world and study how to use them to construct incremental function families for the replace operation. We first see that after bringing the PMAC and PMAC1 schemes into our syntax, we directly obtain IPRF security for them, and therefore IPR, IUF security follows immediately. For a number of constructions, namely the XOR MAC, the GMAC, the Poly1305 AES, and PWC, the natural expression in our syntax gives us IUF security, but not IPRF security. This is because these schemes require the nonce to be part of the tag, and therefore achieving pseudo-randomness is not possible. To get IPRF security, we instead extract an incremental hash function from each of these and then use our IHTE transform. Finally, we note 
that the Pmax plus and Zmax schemes do not achieve incrementality on being naturally transformed into our framework. However, we are still able to extract an incremental hash function from these constructions, and we use that with the IHTA transform to get IPRF security. So to summarize, we define incremental function families within a non-space framework and introduce strong correctness as a property to reduce proof complexity. We define two notions of security, IPRF and IUF for these incremental function families. We showed that IPRF security implies IUF security. We constructed two transforms that go from schemes that are secure in the single document setting to schemes that are secure in the multi-document setting. We also constructed a transform that takes an incremental hash function and returns a scheme that is IPRF secure for single documents for the replace operation. We extract incremental hash functions from various existing message authentication schemes and use them to build secure IPRFs for the replace operation.